When I first started at College Wesleyan Church, we had four different venues, and each venue had its own style. Uh, and over time, we started to see that these styles were becoming more convictions. Uh, and the church leadership in 2013 decided to, to say that they valued corporate worship, all of us being together in one room, experiencing the same thing over stylistic preference. And so this began the journey of merging all our venues into one service. To do this, though, we had to analyze what each of those congregations knew. And so I got into analyzing our song canon um, in this transition. Basically, I had to figure out what our congregations were singing in each of these different venues so that when we merged into one, we could start with songs that most of our people knew. And so this even went to taking the amount of people in one room and coming up with the stats for what percentage of our entire congregation knows this song or this song. Um, so that at the end of that project, I was able to give a list of 10 to 15 songs that everyone would know. And so that's where we started. Uh, but then over time, I kept keeping track, but our canon was all about the number of times we would sing a song. And so it just told us these are the top songs that we would sing and um, these are the songs we would sing the least. But then we started to wonder, what does this song canon tell us? Uh, because we believe that worship is formative, so anything we sing uh, has content and that content is teaching us things. It's forming us into a certain type of person. So this began a journey of analyzing our song canon from the lens of how are our songs and the content that we're singing forming us as worshiping believers. So to begin this process, uh, I began to look at every song from the lens of what it taught us about God. What names did it attribute to God? What persons of the Trinity did it uh, mention? What verbal phrases or attributes uh, did it tell us about who God was? And then even how did it address God? Was it in second person where uh, the song um, spoke as though God was in the room, we worship you? Or was it in third person, we worship Jesus, um, where he's ambiguously somewhere? From there, I went to analyzing it from the narrative of God. What portion of the story does it tell us? Is it about creation? Is it about the incarnation, whether it be just general incarnation or the birth, death, resurrection of Christ? Uh, or was it about recreation? Uh, I looked at it from the lens of the Christian year. Was this uh, a song that fit the season of Advent and waiting or Christmas and celebration or epiphany and the wonder of the manifestation of Christ or Lent as we journey with Christ to the cross or an Easter as we celebrate the triumph um, of Christ over the grave or ordinary time uh, where we journey with the church committed to the, to the mission that God has called us to. After analyzing all of those things, I was able to separate the songs into revelation songs, songs that told us about who God was, and then response songs, songs that allowed us to respond to that revelation. And then there were songs that had both uh, revelation and response in them. I also uh, analyzed the songs that were corporate in nature, uh, God, we worship you, and then individual, God, I worship you. And then I started to notice that songs have different functions. So there were songs that acted more as like prayers where we were singing a, a prayer to God. But then there were songs that were more narrative based or uh, would proclaim things about God, sometimes through the story. And then there were songs that were exhortations that were kind of us singing to each other as the corporate body to say, go and love people as God has loved us. And so I broke songs into their specific function. And lastly, I asked the question of formation. Who do these songs make us into? What are they teaching us uh, about God and about ourselves and about the world? And as I analyzed it, four topics seemed to come up. Uh, the first one was right reality. The songs were teaching us the way that God views the world and his work in the world. Second category was right identity. There are songs that were teaching us to view ourselves as God sees us. And the third was the right likeness, that there are songs that, that say we can be transformed and made new into the likeness of Christ. And then there are songs, the fourth category, uh, right living, songs that pushed us into the world to be sent and, 
and love and serve and care for those around us. As we continue to analyze our song canon, this process allows us to check ourselves and determine what portions of the story we're leaving out, or to ask, what are we teaching our congregation about God through the songs that we sing? And ultimately, how are our songs deforming or forming our people into the likeness of Christ?